Hey guys, Doc. So today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about scalping, give you guys some tips. I change a little bit on the way I think. So I'm kind of a little bit of a new approach. This is going to be after I do that, I'm going to just hodgepodge a video and show you guys what we're doing up here, some of our projects, because we've got rainstorms coming in. We've done so much work this week. But I did want to let you know, um, there's a chance that I might be giving away either a real mower or, or a zero turn mower. I haven't decided yet, so I'm still thinking. And the way I'm gonna do that is you need to be on our email list. So in the description below on that page, you'll see uh, on that page, you'll say sign up for our email list. There's no spam, no marketing. Let me explain what that does. That sends out when I do a post or a new video, it'll send out an email and say, this idiot's done a new video or a post. And that's basically it. So you just you can ignore those emails if you want or it just sort of says hey i put up a new video because youtube algorithm is horrible for notifying you plus i usually send out two emails a year if there's something special going on but i do not we do not send out emails to you every day saying crap so it's just an automatic notification system but if we do give we do a giveaway it's going to be a pretty big giveaway on the tune of three or four thousand dollars and that's what we use we use that actual email list so make sure you're on that all right, I hadn't, had to get that in here, so now let's go to the video. Morning. So, <laughs> I guess it's not morning anymore. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. I got another busy, crazy kind of day, but today I wanted to give some upfront, I wanted to give some tips on scalping, because I've actually kind of changed some of the suggestions that I have over the years, so I'll go into that. Then I'll just hop around the property. We got a, so much going on, including a new arrival of a mower that I've been researching for the past six weeks. I've been torn between two different models and two different manufacturers because this property is actually getting so big now we have to do something so I'll show you a, a, a preview of that. I have to come out here we have to real mow this. We got some thunderstorms moving in tomorrow afternoon so we're out here like crazy just getting everything done. I actually had the skid steer here for a couple days yeah I put that video up um, I actually am using the skid steer to plant some sunflowers up in the fields. I'll show you that real quick. Just anything I can do. So anyways, uh, don't forget I cover a lot of this stuff in the lawn guides. I say at the beginning of every video, the lawn guide, freelawncareguide.com. That's the website for cool season. At the top is the link for the zoysia and Bermuda. They're independent websites. Two million people have used them. There is no charge. You don't sign up for anything. We don't want your information. But you have to bookmark them or save them. Otherwise, you'll lose them because we don't send you out emails about them. Everything, and we, we talk about this a lot. We talk about scalping and pre-emergent and this stuff we're thinking about right now. So, first of all, let's talk about when to scalp. As soon as you start to see green haze on your lawn, that's probably temperatures. Now, we have a cold front moving in, but, man, temperatures are in the 70s and even touching the 80s. I'm seeing some Bermuda come up on the pond front. We're starting to scalp that down. That's about the time you want to scalp. But if you haven't done a full scalp, what I'm going to recommend is that you do partial or incremental scal scalps. In other words, start taking it down now. Because if you go out and do a full scalp all in one day, man, that's a ton of clippings. It can be an, a butt whipping. <laughs> it can really be a butt whipping. If you, especially if you have a large property of all these clippings. So if you start going out now, let's say your grass is two, winter height is two inches or something, take it down half, 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 Every, go out, start cutting it and start cutting it. It's a lot easier to deal with that. So yes, you can start cutting down. How low to cut it? Personally, it depends, I guess, on what type of cutter you are. So if you're like me, if you're a real mower and you cut, you keep your grass at three quarters of an inch, you'll be taking it down to the, you'll be taking it down to dirt. Um, if you are a push mower or a, a riding mower and you cut yours at two inches, bring it down as low as you can. If you can get it down to an inch or lower, get it down as low as you can. This is the one time to remove all that brown clipping crap. You got to get that off the lawn. What do you do with the clippings? You always pick up scalp clippings and here's why. Number one, they're dead, they're brown, they really don't offer any nutrition to the soil, but they float. So when you start to get a big storm come by, they'll float and they'll cause these tiger stripe lines and they're, you have to go out and rake them. They're a pain in the butt. So yes, gather them up any way you can and then go ahead and just send them off somewhere or whatever you're gonna do with them. So here's, here's the next step that you're gonna do. Hopefully by now, you've got your pre-emergent down and maybe a light coat of PGF balance. That's probably where you should be right now. And now you're getting ready to scalp. After you scalp, here's a little change that I'd like you to do. 
Normally I say don't do a core aeration until your grass is actively growing, but I think this is a good time to do a core aeration. And the reason is, is because core aeration is so much easier when your grass is low. Now, I pick up my cores and that's what I recommend. And why do I do that? It's because if I leave the cores on the ground, when I ride over them, they're gonna go from a core to a flat silver dollar and they're gonna cover up grass and they actually kill the grass. Number two, if you chop those cores up, guess what's gonna happen? Those cores are gonna go right back and fill up the holes you just made. I see it all the time. I mean, they'll fill them up at least half. The other thing is if you real mow, you have to pick them up because there's so many rocks in those cores. How do I pick them up? I use a leaf sweeper. Now I usually make Ryan do it and he hates it because it's a real pain in the butt. But I use a leaf sweeper, I come by and we pick up those cores um, and that's how we do it. So a lot of people are gonna say it returns nutrition to the ground, no it doesn't. It's the same crappy ground that's sitting right next to it that it's on top of. If you want nutrients in your soil, put down some fertilizer. But what I want is I want those holes to remain open for decompaction, for water, for oxygen. That's kind of why we do it. So if you can, do a core aeration. The next thing, after your core aeration, put down a coat of PGF Complete, and then do your second treatment of your spray pre-emergent. That's a good time to do it. So our, in the lawn guides, we cover this, we do a split program. We put down granular, and then a few weeks later, we come out with a light coat of the spray and it works perfect. You won't have weeds for the rest of the season. And basically that's it, you're all set to go. Now, um, you can start to see, see those little yellow patches? So I had some little weeds. So I had some of these little weeds here coming up in the grass. It's not a big deal. And I kind of ignored them and ignored them, but about a week ago, a week, 10 days ago, week and a half ago, I came out with some 2,4-D and I did a light spray on them and it kind of hurt them a little bit. And we had a rain event, we had nice sunny days. I sat here and watched them and watched them. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna do another coat. So I did another light coat of 2,4-D and guess what, they're all, they're all turning yellow. If they're not turning yellow, they're not growing. So now this is all set. I'm not using pre-emergent on this lawn because this is perennial rye and like a lot of you guys have asked, is this going to last into the summer heat of Georgia? I don't know. So I don't want to put down pre-emergent in case I have to do some kind of seeding out here. Um, let me go out and show you the front because that's annual rye grass with Bermuda underneath and we're starting to cut it down low. So let me show you that real quick. So while I'm walking out here, let me show you a little preview of my new toy that arrived today. I sat there for the past six weeks and I had that thing in my cart and I didn't push the buy button because I really wanted to make sure I was buying the right thing. And the reason why I'm buying that is number one, it's a 60 inch deck and we need it. This place is getting huge. We have so much lawn now to cut. But the other thing is, is I need to be out here doing it sometimes. And this ground is so bumpy out here that it's just hell on my lower back and vertebrae. So this, the unit that I bought, it has a my ride. It has a floating, a fully floating deck that actually you basically don't feel the bumps out here. Matter of fact, I put John on it today and he was like, dude, he said, this is like driving a Cadillac. It, it really is amazing. It's nice, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. You feel the difference in the ride? It's a totally different, like smooth, very smooth, totally yeah. different. Like it's comfortable. But like, like, like when I was out here, I came out here with my just regular riding lawnmower, my deer. Dude, I was pounding and pounding and pounding. And my back was killing me. The same way my zero turn, you feel it. Every yeah. single bump. Yeah, you feel it. This, you feel a little bit, but man, it's Ooh, soft. Man. Yeah. It's like driving a car. Yeah, it's nice. So I really was trying, I really was going to buy a deer. I was going back and forth between John Deere and between the Toro, John Deere and Toro. Um, I'm really kind of stuck on right now my bigger equipment USA made. Toro has 11, it's a USA company with 11,000 employees and they split their manufacturing between Japan and here. They do a lot of, this thing is all assembled in the United States. Sure, they probably bring in some parts, but uh, Toro is probably one of the leaders when it comes to turf, golf, turf, whatever. So that's why I went with this thing and it's a badass, that Titan. And I'll do some videos on that coming up. I'm also thinking about uh, the guys at McLean want me to sort of feature one of their new mowers, which is like the big ass beast mower. And I'm thinking about bringing one in, even though I really don't need it, because 
you can see how we're sort of scalping. This is so bumpy out here, so bumpy out here. And I think what I could do is I could actually reel mow this front when the Bermuda comes up, because that thing can handle this bump. And then the rest of the property will use the zero turn on. And then of course we'll reel mow the back. But this was really tall, five inch annual ryegrass. And now we're cutting it down and I'm starting to see I'm starting to see little Bermuda shoots come up all over here. But I really, you can see how it's all scalpy looking. And that's because we're using um, a large deck zero turn and we're at an angle and it's bump. Hell, there's even a little stump we always hit over here. So I'm thinking I could probably reel mow this with the big, with the big boy reel mower coming in if I, if I get one. So quick question, someone was asking why I don't use the wood chips up here. What happens to the color of the wood chips after about two weeks? Turn colors. They turn almost white. Yep. Yeah, and it looks, it just looks like a pile of wood chips. Doesn't look good. This brown mulch that I get, Lowe's had this on sale. It's normally like 370, 380 a bag. They had it for $2 a bag. So that's, I always, at this time of year, they always put that on sale and I wait for it. And man, just, that's a deal. So we got 60 bags of mulch to put out. And I use the term we lightly because I ain't doing it. Working, they want the hours, man. <laughs> Jeff, you're on vacation this week, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's on vacation this week, so he can put in the hours. Anyways, I have to go check uh, my raccoon traps. If you don't know, on the back side of this property, that's another 20 acres back there, we had a raccoon infestation. And if we ever want to have chickens up here, we have to take care of that population. And raccoons decimate turkey population. So we, we had turkeys on the property when we first bought the place, but man, the raccoon population is just out of control. So, and people say, oh, it's a cute little animal. I'm not talking about one or two little raccoons. Over the past 13 months, I have taken 89 raccoons off that back side of that property. 89 raccoons off there. And it's getting to the point that it's actually a little bit hard to catch them now. Like I'm gonna go for three days, I got seven traps out there. It's like three days and I'm not having any raccoons in traps. It's the greatest feeling in the world to drive around and check them and not have any raccoons. It's so nice. So there were two questions from my last video. Number one was, what do I use for bait? Uh, it varies. Sometimes I'll throw in some sardines, but usually I use peanut butter or dry dog food. And we use, these are dog safe traps. Um, I do not want to be catching a dog out here, but basically it just holds their paw. And then I also have a couple live traps too. And <laughs> I have, I have two feral cats out here that I don't mind. I caught one of the feral cats in the trap and man, he was mean and big. I was actually scared to let him go uh, after watching the story about the rabid cat in Fulton County, was it? So I sort of got a stick and opened up that door and he took off. He's a big black cat. Man, he was pissed. So the other question I get a lot is, what do you carry, Doc? Uh, I have a bunch of nine mils, but if you need a good mill, and by the way, I've never talked to these guys, never met these guys. I just saw their ads when I was down at uh, the beach house, Palmetto State Armory. They have some fantastic guns. They build them there in South Carolina, and they have fantastic prices on them. I'm carry, this is the PSA Dagger Compact nine millimeter, and, um, I think it's only like, it's only like 300 and something dollars. Fantastic, I've been, I've been shooting it out at the range over here, at my range, I have a pistol range. Fantastic little gun, if you need one. Go to their website, check them out, and tell them that Doc sent you. Say, hey, I, was, I heard about you on Doc's video. <laughs> Maybe they'll give me some free guns or some shit. <laughs>
All right, so if you if you follow my channel, you'll know that I have three fields. This is the buck field, the high potassium field, and then the corn field up there. And basically what I did yesterday, we don't do any plowing out here anymore, but I had that skid steer with the bucket with teeth. And what I did was, let me walk over there and show you. I want to plant, I want to plant the edges of these fields and I want to do something cool. So I'm going to try sunflower and corn and you can see, man, look how thick this is. Look at this. Is that crazy or what? Man, that is just crazy. You wonder why the deer are just piled in here every night. So what I did was, you can see, I've opened up, you know, two inches of ground here. And it goes all the way around the back side of this field. I put a strip way at the top there. I did behind the orchard on back that field. And then at the very top up there, uh, earlier I walked up there and I'll show you, I did a whole bunch, but I'm gonna scatter out. I got like 25 pounds of sunflower seed coming. And then I've got some seed corn coming. And that's where I'm gonna throw it. Cause these we just maintain for the wildlife. Let me show you the garden real quick. Someone was asking, uh, you know, when I started doing the this year's garden videos, I warned Andersons and I said, I'm getting ready to do a lot of dirt booster videos. You might want to check stock and sure enough, it sold out. So people are asking when the dirt booster is going to be available again. Uh, production runs next week, so it'll be available. Just be patient. Man, that's looking good. The blueberry bushes are here. The garden, the dirt's all set. We got rain coming in, but man, look at this orchard. So the vegetable garden is here and then the orchard is over here, but man, man, isn't it gorgeous? Look at the little pears on here. See them? I got little pears right there. When I planted these, I put 20% dirt booster compost and then 80% uh, native soil. That's how we did these and they've done really well. Man, and I've got, peaches, pears, and apples. The apples are always the last to come out. And we put up these, we made these deer cages. It doesn't stop them from nipping the bottom one, but it keeps them from the top. But look at this tree. This tree is far ahead of all of them. And look at these baby peaches. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? If I come out here this year on my property and if I start picking a couple pieces of fruit, I'm going to be the happiest man alive. <laughs> I swear. While the guys are over there doing mulch, I'm going to cut this with the real mower, even though it's wet. I need to get this done, but I've got all these <laughs> stupid pea pods, these stupid seed pods and stuff in here. So I just texted John. I got a grass catcher up at the barn. He's going to bring it down here. Looks good. I still got leaves and a few other things on here, but that'll look good. And there we are. <laughs> good Lord, look at that. It's all the little crappy stuff. Look at that, that's really looking nice. Looks good. So one of the benefits of working all day is you can stick a pork shoulder in the oven, five hours, 325. And let me tell you what, that crispy pork, it's just like a pork rind. It's so good. And this just falls apart. Oh, it's awesome. Another long day. <laughs> almost done. I'm almost caught up. I've got so many projects that I'm kind of just lining up. I want to get everything done because I'm going to have to make a trip down to the beach house and do a lot of work down there. Hit subscribe. You don't want to miss those videos because I'm going to shoot down there probably next month. And what I'm going to do is tackle that unruly lawn that needs a lot of help. So you'll want to see that. John will come out here while I'm gone. He'll be out here three days a week. They'll be, John and Jeff will be taking care of the property. So uh, that's good. Let me come over here real quick. So this is that little 
this is that little in-between section in here and man that looks so much nicer so i bought a couple little trees those are from lowe's put down my mulch then i put down the brown mulch on top we've got rain coming in i'm going to be seeding all this in bermuda over here and then if i'm not mistaken i'm going to try this has bermuda under it but i'll probably do a little bit of reseeding on this and i'm going to start i'm going to see if we can real mow this because this is just absolutely crazy that is going to be a challenge oh man anyways hit subscribe and get the lawn guides and that's about it i'll talk to you later doug Fred didn't get that one. <laughs> my blue heron that comes out here and steals all my fish. <laughs> Pretty little guy. Shellcracker. <laughs>